feel good. Yeah, yeah. Let me start sharing it now. Yeah, just press go live or something. Is it live? It says live, yeah. Oh, hello. Better walk up then. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the house of uh, DRW Guitars. <laughs> Mr. Dwight, and we're going to be talking about two things. Actually, probably lots of things. So the first thing is this neck. Got visitors in the house. There we go. <laughs> so what? what is this? What is it made of? Uh, it's just some maple. So it's curly maple, flame maple, as we, we call it. And uh, it's that just a nice big solid piece, lots of flame, but you can't see the flame yet. So it's it's for a custom build for a guitar. And do you, yeah, wow, this is awesome. This is cool. And do you have one that, what does it look like when you've well, flamed it? Cut out of the same piece of timber is this neck. So and that's the flame that we get. Wow, that's cool, man. And how long does this process take? Does it take a while to sort that out? Making the neck. Or putting the flames on. The flames are already there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, just, I heard about the, the actual <laughs> photo, flame. Photo flame. The Japanese do photo flame, which is like a sticker that they put over the timber. Yeah, there you go. Well, I heard about the, the flame maple. The reason how it gets its flame is it gets blown around in the wind. Blown around the wind. It's, yeah. got, it's actually like a defect in that sense. And, and you, it will show up mostly when you get timber that's quarter sawn or rift sawn. So flame maple, maple, I understand if the tree goes this way. So what's quilted maple? It's use? exactly the same thing, but more going around in circles. It's in the cyclone area. All right. Well, I thought they put a blanket over it or something. So, <laughs> so, uh, do you know? yeah, do. <laughs> so right here we've got John, John and Steve. There's John. Steve's behind the camera. John. Steve's, Steve's behind the camera. And Marshall. And we're missing a... These are these are these are obviously the uh, <laughs> shred in the shed guys. <laughs> shred in the shed guys that come to DRW. <laughs> yes. So, and Dwight makes amazing things here, pickups. So, can you tell us about these amazing pickups and what happens? Oh yeah, cool. Because um, you need a set. You need. You do set. absolutely. So, obviously, I'm doing single coils, humbuckers, um, with covers, without covers, different sorts of magnets. That's cool. Um, it's so been that's, aged. Yeah, I've aged that. Um, uh, these are looking like the bumblebees. So with these ones here, I've actually um, wound these with Alnico 2 magnets. Uh, this humbucker here has an Alnico 4 magnet. That's a, an Alnico 5. These are special Alnico 5s, but that's secret source stuff. We won't talk about okay. the, the secret sauce but about the Alnicos. Fair, and yeah, we, we did discuss the secret sauce off camera and it's, yeah. it's worth it's worth that's, investigating. That's right. Yeah. But for the people who don't know about the El Nico magnets versions of one, two, three, four, five, yeah. in English, what does that mean? Uh, well, El Nico is our aluminium, nickel, and cobalt. So the the different numbers will give you a different grading of aluminium, nickel, and cobalt. So the El Nico five, for instance, in this range here, is probably the strongest magnet. So it's it's a it's a combination of the the three compounds that will hold a magnetic charge or a gauze rate much higher than our Nico 4 or our Nico 2. And how does the, so the strength of the magnet will translate into what kind of sound? Um, it's obviously more powerful. So the, the stronger <laughs> yeah, the, the stronger the magnet, the, the more yeah. um, current that it can actually produce even from a lower wind. So like for instance, if this is a 7.5, uh, which I think this is about a 7.5, um, a similar 7.5 with an Al Nico 2 won't be as, as hot, it won't be as powerful because the magnet is not as strong. Okay. So it just, it, and, it, and by lessening that, that gauze rate, the magnetic field, changes again the nuance of tone um, because it's, it's a different magnetic field that's creating the, the current. So if someone's going to buy a custom set of pickups and yep. they don't understand that series of strength of magnet, do you... Yep. Uh, advise or what can you advise them to pick you know based on well years? yeah I think I think really um, one of the one of the great things with um, pickups and and uh, youtubers uh, we've all got our favorite players so, yeah. you know, that we, we'd like to hear those sorts of tonal things coming out of so if you say to me oh you know I want to sound like Get some tonal nuance of Kenny Wayne Chap with, with his single coils, or you know, <laughs> jo jo <laughs> or, or um, um, Ingve Malmsteen, or whether you want to be more Hendrix. like you know, um, in the path world, you want to be 
more like the, the vintage um, style of, of Les Paul sounds. Um, cool. Then, you know, tell me who, who you like. And, right, and then so you can advise. Yeah, and then, then we can go, so well, he's playing this sort of a guitar, he's using these sorts of magnets, the output's probably bound around about this. There's plenty of research that I do as well, um, especially if it's a, a player that I don't know. Ah, but, um, that's I cool. So he researches the players to get the. So they have yeah, the, so I can hear. Up. I can hear what people are wanting to me, me to translate into a into a pickup. So if I brought in a recording and said, "Hey, I want to sound like this," will you be able to reverse engineer? Reverse engineer those tonal things that I'm hearing, and then you can, if you've got your effects or whatever it is that the other colorations, you know, the condiments, then wow. you'll, you'll be able to get there. That's yeah. that's amazing because I, I think I told you a story. I got to meet uh, Mr. Ryan Bird. Mm -hmm. um, Borka, and every amp he has, he only has one guitar that tunes every single voice in, because yeah. he understands what he's yeah. 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 So it's yeah. quite interesting. So like for instance with these ones, um, I've just had a, I'm gonna have a look at these ones again. A company's uh, <laughs> set of pickups in that I put in one of my Les Pauls, which is my crash test dummy Les Paul. And so you, got, um, you got a seatbelt on that guitar? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And a funny sticker. Funny sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've just gone and replicated that pickup. So sometime today or tomorrow, I'll actually take that pick, the set of pickups out after spending some time playing it and right. put these in and see how close I got. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. as a yeah. benchmark. As a benchmark for what I'm yeah. hearing, what I'm trying to wind. The outputs are the same, the magnets are the same, mm. the colours are the same. I've even you know, used the same bobbin colours. Very not good. That, not that that makes any difference to the tone. That's good, that's good. And so it'll be the same, same, so it'll be same player, same guitar, same strings, same amp, same settings, just different pickups. Different pickups? And what else? Uh, so any other style of pickups? So you do the single coils, so bars. Yeah, yeah. tellies, um, P90s. So your, your telly pickups, your P90s. Um, I've rewind. Bass. Yeah, bass pickups. Bass. Yeah, bass pickups. There's the bass player. Um, <laughs> and and also I, I do do a lot of rewinds and repairs of pickups. Um, there are some pickups that come in. Like uh, John. Like yeah, said. John's come in to, to get a rewind as well as some other work. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know the um, repairs have broken. I had um, uh, an original 1959 single coil in the other week. Wow! Um, I had well, I had the whole Strat in, but um, when I serviced the Strat to, to go off to it's in Sydney at the moment. So then I've rewound that based off what I've gleaned from the other two pickups that were original. Yeah. So I okay, go well, okay. Now I know. Where they were when they were making these pickups in 59. Ah, okay. I knew what, knew what copper, mark. yeah, knew what copper they were using, so I used the same copper. I uh, knew what sort of output, yeah, what output that they were going with these, so I wound in that, that range of output. Yeah. That sort of thing. And knowing that it was for a neck, wound it for the neck as well. Very good. And maybe a couple of other things. Uh, stainless steel frets. Yes. Uh, what can you tell us and recommend? And we were discussing before about the thicknesses, and it's good, kind of good because. You're here to get yeah, to exactly. It. Yep, yep. Uh, look, stainless steel. Uh, I think so many of us are so used to our our, um, our no regular nickel no silver, <laughs> our regular nickel <laughs> silver frets, and we're we're used to if we're uh, players that do a lot of bending, etc. We're we're used to uh, eventually having to get fret levels and recrown and having the frets serviced regularly, especially if we're regular players. Yeah. Um, the thing is with stainless, the bends, when they're in, the bends are just like butter and they're like butter all year round. Right. Being stainless steel, they don't start to tarnish and get slow like nickel does. Yep. Uh, so they're always really silky to play on and they just don't wear out. Um, okay, that's good. So what happens is the, the, the benefit for the owner of the guitar is they don't have to get the guitar's fret serviced, which means I'll lose a job. But... <laughs> but the joy of, of it is is that the playability of the guitar moves to the next level. So anyone that's played stainless frets know mm. exactly what Well, I had, well as I about. said before, my main guitar, uh, I had it refretted. Actually, I should get a lot of my guitars refretted because they've worn frets out. I don't yeah, know why, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> play with your elbow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the <laughs> elbow grease. Yeah, my frets actually look like this one. <laughs> so I've got a new fretless. So, um, 
But uh, uh, yeah, just actually the cost of doing that, or was that just cost per guitar? Yeah, yeah look, look, different, different guitars, different um, finishes. So a, a maple uh, finish to refret will always be a bit more expensive than a rosewood because it's particularly if it's a, an F style guitar, they usually put the frets in and then they spray the poly over the frets. Mm. So you then ah. have to sit there and carefully cut all the poly off the frets and then wow. gently heat the fret, pop them out. Um, and it's, it's like to do a good fret job, it's two days of your life. Yeah, wow. With stainless. It yeah, really wow. is like, because there's a lot of fret dressing that has to get done. Yeah. A, and and it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it's, it's such is a hard Because it wears your tools out, isn't it? Oh yeah, it just destroys files. Yes, right. Destroys, you know, your cutters. But the end result is fantastic. So you do guitar servicing, you make your own pickups, yep. stainless steel frets, yep. custom, custom bits and pieces. Custom bits and pieces, yeah. Maybe custom, this is a custom build. Custom build. So that one goes, that one oh, goes go. to, uh, to Canberra probably tomorrow. Yeah, there we go. Um, that's already been up on my DRW page. Yeah, so, so check this, that page out, DRW Custom Guitars. This is my workhorse, so I've just made a new neck for that. And thin, oh, super okay. thin neck. Yeah, it's a super thin neck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wafer thin. Wafer thin tree trunk. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, that's the baseball bat one. Yeah, that's the yeah. baseball bat. Yeah, but, right. but, being old and blind, I've also put big dots that glow in the oh, dark. Yeah. Do, you yeah. have that, do you have that stuff that we can... <laughs> Just that little cardboard thing right there. There we go. Because yeah. I, I need to get this uh, on my guitars. Um, especially going on tour, I can't see the fretboard. Can we yeah. have a look at that? Yeah. There you go. So they're just little rods. Little dots. Glow yeah. in the dark. Yeah, these ones will glow green. These ones here will glow blue. Um, and you, you'll find them on... Uh, like that blue Ibanez guitar that I showed you, but they've got yep. a little black ring on them. So I can buy that with that little... So that works during the daytime as well? Oh, they all work during the daytime. I can see those clearly. But, um, <laughs> the best I was joking. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, the, the hey, best. I got one on Dwight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, it's, all, it's all rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but... Uh, Until someone loses an eye. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> he's already got 100 up on me. So, uh, and the, probably the last thing is uh, the people... What, who are you advertising? Who am I advertising? Yeah. This, is, this is work uniform, man. Yeah. I'm not advertising anyone. Dwight actually goes on tour. So the Angels, so for the American people watching, uh, Dwight is... Angel, Angel City over there in America. Is uh, a touring guitar tech with these guys. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to work with the boys. Yeah, uh, some very famous guitar players. Are you allowed to name drop? Uh, you love name dropping, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, you need a name dropper, otherwise... Yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. Go so, uh, like, like I, I work with Doug Dijon. Let <laughs> <laughs> me give you some money. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah, drop that name. That, that's <laughs> Where's that FPOS machine? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, does he take Medicare? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get to, I'm, I'm lucky. I get to, uh, when, when we had gigs and we had uh, Red Hot Tours and we had uh, all the different tours, I got to work with, with the boys and the angels. Um, uh, which is Aussie, ma a massive band in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Very and the boys with Rose Tattoo. Yep. Uh, Angry Anderson. Angry, yeah. He's our guy and uh, Bob. And uh, uh, Bob. it's our bass player, so he's pretty. Um, it's probably Angry Anderson giving him the call now. Yeah. And you know, I've worked with, with Susie and Dave with Baby Animals. Yep. Dave Leslie. And, and uh, James Rain. And so Bergs. Bergs. Um, and Josh. Oh, wow. And, should have probably started well, with all the name dropping. Yeah, yeah, no, lots, lots um, of work with Paul Kelly, um, Ross Wilson, um, so... Uh, Daddy Phil. Yeah, Daddy Phil. Yep. Yeah, that's very yeah, good. So, um, Andy, Andy the guitar player there. And also, uh, James Blake from... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, I didn't know, any know. other um, amazing facts besides Corvettes we should know about you? Uh, uh, I'm a struggling musician like the rest of us. Um, I've been uh, avoiding reality and trying to work only in the music industry for a long time oh. by doing stuff like this. And but you're very and passionate, and it shows. And this is fantastic. And, and, you know, custom necks, custom builds, um, pickups, servicing, refrets, um, and it's all it's all just a bit of fun. You know, you're dead for a long time, so may as well get on with it. All right, yeah, have a lot of fun. Thank you very much.
Thank you. And thanks everyone. And there's John and Steve and Marshall. Thank Say hello. Thank you. Legend. That's a cut. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you.